Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to another video. Today we have a very special topic. It's one of the rudimentary algorithms that you should know. It's a very popular algorithm. Um, it, it's one that works on sorted arrays. It is called binary search. You might have heard of it. And I'm going to explain the code. I'm going to go through a recursive and an iterative solution, explain the time complexities, and explain the space complexities, and give you code walkthroughs for each one. Now, um, you might have heard of binary search. So, so, so what is binary search? Let, let me get into it. Um, binary search, also known as half interval search or logarithmic search, is an algorithm that takes an element in a sorted array or that looks for an element in a sorted array. Um, and there you're giving a target, like you're given some number to find in an array, right? And it compares that target with the middle element. Uh, which is reassigned at each successive step if it doesn't find the target element at that middle step at that middle right so basically what we want to do is we want to at each successive step see if the target and the mid are equal and if they aren't then the half then the target can't be in is eliminated so let's just say for instance you have an array you find the middle of the array let's say you have a 10 element array, right? And obviously the fifth element, which is the index four would be the middle. So you check that index and see if it's equal to, and this is an assorted array, by the way, you see if that is equal to the target, whatever number they've given you to find, right? And if that number is greater than the mid, what you wanna do is you want to move one space or one element past the mid and you want to declare that mid as your low right um or that's that uh, extra that plus n plus one or whatever mid plus one um you want that to be your low right and then your high will stay your high and then you'll calculate a new mid now let's just say it's less than the mid then the mid becomes your high and you calculate a new mid and your low remains the same. So depending on where um, or whether or not the target value is actually less or greater than the mid, you have certain operations that you can take which will further bisect the array um, into a new half. And uh, as when a new mid is selected, the search continues to try and find a target given a new search boundary. So like, like I said, you um, either plus one for the mid or minus one and the mid will either become the new low or the new high depending on whether that target element is greater or less than the mid and you'll see all of this once I start to walk through the code and in terms of time complexity in worst case it runs overall of log n um, so it's logarithmic so where n is the number of elements in the array um, but one thing one thing, one thing, the array must be sorted. So let's take a look at an example here, a visual representation of what's going on. Um, so we're given the key 47, right? And you know, there's a 20 element array. Um, it goes up to 19 indexes because we start indexes at zero. We have zero be our low, or the index at zero be our low, and the index at 19 be our high, and then nine is our mid, right? So what the algorithm is going to do is it's searching for 47, which is at the third index, right? We're going to check the mid and we're going to see, hmm, is this middle element, is this 107, is that greater than 47? What we're looking for is it less than 47? Obviously it's greater. So what we're going to do, we're going to eliminate this half, everything past nine, right? And this will become our high, right? So as you can see, we've eliminated everything for the most part past eight. So what we do is for the high element, we go mid minus one, right? And that element is now your high. Now let's say this element that we're looking for was greater than the mid. Then we do mid plus one and we start at the 10th index and now be our low. So we just, we the low remained the same since 47 was less than the mid. We recalculated a new mid given a new boundaries and the boundary ends at the eighth index where 99 is because the value and you can see here 
He's been set as a valley at 459. 59 is greater than 47. Um, high will now move to index three this time. So after, you know, we've, re we've reassigned the boundaries of the array, um, we're going to establish that high as 99. We're at the eighth index. Zero stays the same as the low. And we recalculated the mid, which is now at four and uh, index four. And the element at index four is 59, which is greater than 47, as we see down here, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, reassign the boundaries. So because this is greater than the mid, um, because this is greater than the target element, and this is the mid, this the three will become the new high, right? Because it's mid minus one if the target is less than the mid, right? So as you can see, we further bisect this array and the high is now at index three, which happens to be the index that we're looking for. Low stays the same and we recalculate the mid to the index one, which holds the 10, right? So we now check the 10 and we see, oh wait, this 10 is less than, less than the target value, which is what we're looking for. So since the 10 is less than 47, the low will now move, remember, if we see that this 10, if we see that this mid is less than the target value, what we're going to do is we're going to go mid plus one and that will be the new low. So 20 is going to be the new low. It's going to start at index two, like we mentioned down here. So now you see the low, the mid are the same. The high is 47, which is at index three, which is actually the key we're looking for. So we now check the mid and we now see again that the mid is less than the uh, actual target value. So we're going to do mid plus one, which would bring this mid to index three. It would also bring the low to index three. So everything will just be at that same index, the mid, the high and the low. And since that's the index we're looking for, when we check the mid and we see that it's equal to 47, we now return the index three. 47 all right and that's basically how a binary search is done so depending on whether or not your um your index or the, your target that you're searching for is is greater or less than the mid we want to bisect the array in certain ways if it's greater than the mid so the target element if you're looking this remember this is a sorted array if it's greater than the mid then what you want to do is you want to do mid plus one and that mid plus one will now be your low Right. And if it's less than a mid, you want to do mid minus one. And now the high would be that mid minus one. So and then you recalculate the mids and you do your 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 checks again. Um, so that's enough explaining. Um, so I have a problem here. Uh, here we go. Um, it says given a sorted array of integers, um, return the index of the given key and return minus one if the key is not found. Right. So I'm going to code up the solutions here in Java and I'm going to do the recursive solution first before and then describe that. And then I'll explain um, the time complexities and space complexities. And then also we can talk about the iterative solution. All right. So I'm going to open my Eclipse here. Um, the algorithms. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new actually what's going on um go to, so let me just go into a package and then we're going to create a new class i'm going to create a class called binary search just name it search all right so for the iter for, for cursor solution um the run time complexity is going to be, uh, the time complexity is going to be logarithmic O of n, and also the space complexity is going to be logarithmic because the recur recursive solution, um, it consumes memory on a stack because recursion, you're calling another function, you're adding another function to the stack, uh, mm -hmm. which is consuming some sort of memory, right? So just to recap, of how the algorithm works. At every step, we're going to consider the array between low and high indices. We're going to calculate the middle index. 
And if the element at the mid index is the key, we return the mid. If the mid is greater than the key, then we change the index high to mid minus one. And the index at low remains the same. However, if the mid, if the element at mid is less than the key, then we change the low to mid plus one and the index at high remains the same. When low is greater than the high, the key doesn't exist and the minus one is returned, right? All right, so I know that's a lot of explaining, but let's just code this out. So I'm gonna call this method um, public static int. I'm gonna call it binary search. Right, and it's gonna take a int array, and it's gonna have a key. It's gonna have a low. It's gonna have a high. Right. Um, so, uh, but I did int array key blah blah. All right, so. First thing we want to do is we want to have our check to see if you know we've actually exceeded our boundary, right? So that's gonna be if low is greater than a high. Right? And when that happens, what we're gonna do, we're going to return minus one. Cause you know, as we're going through the array. If the low just happens to be greater than the high, then that means we've exceeded our boundary and we need to return a minus one because we haven't found the element, right? Okay, so moving along, what we're gonna do is we're gonna need to calculate the mid, which is gonna be calculated by adding the low plus the high um, divided by two. All right. So we've got um, got a number high minus low. It's gonna be high minus. It's gonna be <laughs> the low plus high minus low divided by two. And we want to do this in like parentheses. So we execute certain operations first, mainly the high minus low first. Then we do the division. Then we do the addition. And this is just more in a more efficient way of calculating the mid. Um, so next, what we're going to do is we're going to have a condition where we check whether the middle index is equal to the key. And if it is, we want to return the mid, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to say if ARR mid is equals to key. What we want to do is we want to return mid. So if that doesn't work, we want to say if else, if the key is greater or the key is sorry, less than array mid. What we want to do? What do we want to do? Uh, remember and recall that I said if the key is greater. Oh, the key is less, sorry, I keep mixing them up. If the key is less than the, the index at mid, what we want to do is we want to set the boundaries and make the high mid minus one, right? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to return, since this is a recursive algorithm, we're going to return binary search, right? But with the new boundaries. So we're going to do array key, low, and remember, we repurpose the mid, I mean the high, to be mid minus one. So it's gonna set new boundaries, All right? Um, and then the last thing we wanna do is obviously, that's if we find that uh, the key is actually greater than the mid, we want to return because that's the only other uh, scenario that's left. We want to turn on binary search. We want to do that on the array. We have a key, 
gonna have a mid plus one. Remember, the mid plus one will be the now, the new low and high will remain the same. So we do high. And uh, yeah, that's basically it for the recursive algorithm, right? Um, so after this, what we could do is we could do like a static say bin search right and that's gonna take an int a an int array a and it's gonna take an int key right and then what we're gonna do is in there we're gonna return binary search which is the recursive algorithm we just had and we just made and we're gonna submit or pass it the A, the key, the low is always gonna be zero, and the high is gonna be A dot length minus one, if this could load. And there we go, that's, that's the whole algorithm right there, that's the recursive algorithm. Um, now I wanna create an array, I wanna make sure this is all working. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an array and I'm going to, in my main method, just test this out. Remember, the array must be sorted. So in my main method, I'm gonna do public static void um, main string args. Right, and in my main method, what do I got going on? Um, I'm gonna create an array, so I'm gonna just do int r, there's too many r's, a r r is equals to, all right, I'm just gonna just throw in some random number. I'm gonna throw in some random numbers and I'm going to make sure that they're all sorted. So say one, three, five. Space that out a bit. Seven, 11, 13, 16, 19, 23, 39, it doesn't matter, 41, and 55. 41, 33, 35. So that's the array there. Um, so basically, uh, what are we gonna do? I'm gonna say int target, and we're gonna say, I'm gonna have the target be what thirteen. Now, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Um, we're gonna do this and pass it. We can pass it the array and target. And since this returns an int, we can just throw this inside, um, uh, inside like a print statement, you know? So we could just say system dot dot print. Right, so what we could do is, because this is gonna return an int, and we can just add, throw that result in there. All right, and that 
should be, yeah. We should run that and see what we get. Five. So remember, we the result of Brenner research is five. Um, remember, we had our target would be thirteen, and is returning us the index in which that target is found if it is found in the array. So remember, the array start is zero. So this is zero for number one, one, two, th three, four, five. So there we go. There we go. It works. Returns the index on a sorted array of uh, integers, sort of array of integers, it returns the index in which the target is found. Now let's say the target is 31. That should be six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Should be 10. We just run that. And there we go. The result of binary search is 10. All right, so although this is a really good solution, um, and the time complexity, like I said, is O of N, O of log N, um, because you're bisecting the array in half at each step. This is not the most optimal and efficient solution. And as fancy as recursion sounds, and it is, um, it's not the best solution or the, not the best approach to use in every, or it's not the best, yeah, it's not the best approach to use in every situation. Because if space is an issue here, you have a logarithmic space complexity because at each level, you're creating another function call at each recursive level. If you don't find it immediately, you're gonna have to recurse again. So that's gonna create another function on the stack which uses up more memory. A better solution, which is a solution I'm gonna show you right now, is the iterative solution. Um, it has a space complexity of, it's constant actually, uh, has this constant space complexity. So it's actually way, way better, all right? It's like, you know, it's a logarithmic still in time complexity, but since it doesn't create any auxiliary space or like with arrays, it doesn't create an auxiliary array. It's just really just shifting a pointer. And I'll show you that in a second. It's just shift shifting a pointer um, for the mid and the low indexes and, uh, and high indexes as well. Uh, so the space complexity is order of one because you're operating on the same array uh, and you're not creating a function call on the stack. So let's just see that. Let me just stop rambling and just show you that. All right, so I'm gonna keep the class the same. I'm just gonna delete all this. Probably just gonna delete everything in this method. Wait, okay. Not gonna need this. Clear out this print. All right. So basically, we're not going to need like to pass it uh, a low here. We're not going to need a high. We're just going to need the array and the key, right? Still pretty much the same sort of um, method signature where you're returning an int, but you're passing only the array and the key this time for the iterative solution. So what I want to do right now is I'm going to declare low, set that equal to zero, declare high, obviously set that equals to the array dot length minus one for the last element. I'm going to have a while loop and that while loop, I'm going to say while low is less than or equals to high, right? What I want to do while low is less than or equal to high, we're going to declare, we're going to just try and find a mid and pretty much the same calculation as before where you add the low and in parentheses, you do your, uh, oh, you do your first operation, which was the low, the high minus low. And then you divide that by two and there we go. So that's how you calculate the mid. Um, and we're just gonna have an if check. The first if check is gonna be if array this mid is equals to the key, right? 
what are we gonna do? We're gonna return the mid, just like in a recursive solution. Mid, right? However, if we're gonna have another if, if that is not the case, what we wanna say is the key is less than, i.e. the target that we're looking for is less than the mid, if what we're gonna do is we're going to do high is equals to mid minus one, right? And what we're gonna do in the else statement, else, we have to have an else statement which sets the low because that's the only other condition that would exist, mid plus one. And outside of that, if that doesn't work, we return the mid, or we return minus one, sorry. So that's your whole algorithm, that's your iterative algorithm. Um, and like I said, it's just a while loop that reassigns the mid at each go, and the pointer for the high, the low, and the mid is just shifting, and we're just trying to just check against whatever key is passed after the shifts are made, right? So in my main method, again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna declare some array and a is equal to um, it has to be sorted, remember, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, This array um, has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve elements. Twelve elements, right? And I'm gonna say in target, and I'm gonna say that seven. Seven obviously doesn't exist in this array, but we just want to show you how this works. So, system not out. Print line um, results of binary search is basically like the same thing before we just call the binary search and we pass it the array. So we pass it A and then we pass it the target. So it should return a minus one because seven isn't in this array. So I'm gonna clear this console and run it. Minus one, there we go. Let's add a space there. So yeah, return minus one because obviously seven isn't there. Now let's add something that is there. We're gonna go 22. And that should return zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Should return a seven. There we go. And just to, for sanity's sake, let me do 31. That should be nine. And run that. We're gonna run that. And yeah, there we go. So that's basically how you code up a binary search and the basic intuition behind the binary search. I hope this video wasn't too long and I hope I was able to get this point across. And again, like, comment, and subscribe if you find value in these videos so I can keep on pumping out content like this. Um, thanks for watching and you have a great day.